السلام عليكم معكم دانا أبو بكرة من كلية طب الأسنان إن شاء الله اليوم رح نبلش بـ Chapter 15 اللي هي The Digestive Tract So the digestive system consists of the digestive tract which is also known as the gastrointestinal tract or the alimentary canal and the GI tract consists of the oral cavity okay, the esophagus the stomach, the small and large intestines the anus and the salivary glands the liver and the pancreas So هاي ال digestive system عن أول شيء the digestive organs نفس ما حكينا oral cavity the pharynx the esophagus the stomach the large and small intestine and the anus so the digestive organs uh, start with the oral cavity and end with the uh, anus وعنا كمان هون the accessory digestive organs so these help in functions they help the digestive organs in function in uh, functions like mastication for example chewing يعني so uh, these consist of the parotid uh, salivary gland, the teeth, the tongue, the sublingual salivary gland, the submandibular salivary gland, and the command the liver. And the liver is responsible for filtration of all absorbed materials before entering the systemic circulation. The liver also makes bile, and that bile is stored in the gallbladder. And the command the pancreas, which is responsible for secretion of several digestive enzymes. Okay, so. في كتير functions لل GI tract we're gonna discuss them now starting with uh, the main function which is to obtain molecules from the ingested food that are necessary for the maintenance the growth and the energy needs of the body during the digestion and نعرف إحنا إنه the proteins the complex carbohydrates the nucleic acids and fats are broken down into monomers into their small molecule subunits so they can be easily absorbed through the small intestine. ونعرف كمان أنه most water and electrolytes are absorbed in the large intestine. In addition to that function, عندنا كمان a function of protecting, واللي هي the inner layer of the entire digestive tract forms an important protective barrier between the content of the tract's lumen and the internal milieu, internal milieu يعني internal environment of the body's connective tissue and the vasculature. Along with those functions, عندنا كمان uh, ingestion, اللي هي ال introduction of food and liquid into into the oral cavity, mastication uh, which is chewing and uh, it's the action of dividing solid food into digestible pieces, motility اللي هما ال muscular movements the peristaltic movements and the movements of materials through through the tract, secretion of lubricating and protective mucus, digestive enzymes and acidic and alkaline fluids and bile, a uh, hormone release for local control of motility and secretion, and the command chemical digestion or enzymatic degradation of large macromolecules in food to smaller molecules and their subunits, and the command absorption of the small molecules in water into the blood and lymph, and finally elimination well excretion of indigestible unabsorbed components of food. So, خلينا نتكلم هلا عن the general structure of the GI tract. All regions of the GI tract have certain uh, structural features in common. Uh, the GI tract is a hollow tube with a lumen of variable diameter and a wall made up of four main layers. So those layers are the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis, and the serosa. We'll talk about them in detail. First, the mucosa. Now, the, the mucosa is the innermost layer and it lines the lumen of the digestive tract. It has three main structures. First, an epithelial lining resting on a basal membrane, um, a basal lamina. بعدين عنا uh, the second main structure which is the lamina propria and uh, the lamina propria is of loose connective tissue that's rich in blood vessels, lymphatics, lymphocytes, smooth muscle cells and often contains small glands. وعنا the third main structure is the muscularis mucosi which is a thin layer of smooth muscle and this uh, muscularis mucosi separates mucosa from the submucosa and it allows local movements of the mucosa. Now another name for mucosa is the mucous membrane. So the second layer is the submucosa and it contains denser connective tissue and now loose connective tissue with mucosa and submucosa and dense connective tissue with larger blood and lymph vessels and the submucosal plexus which is also known as the Meissner plexus and the submucosal plexus is responsible for control of secretions from the submucosa and mucosal glands. بالميكوزه احنا حكينا انه في عندنا glands sometimes بيكون في عندنا glands نفس نفس الشيء بال submucosa هون اسمهم mucosal glands وهون اسمهم submucosal glands uh, يعني هون مكتوب it may also contain glands and significant lymphoid tissue so the Meissner plexus is responsible for the secretion coming from the submucosal glands and the mucosal uh, glands okay the third layer is the thick muscularis 
also known as the, as the muscularis externa, and it is composed of smooth muscle cells organized as two or more sublayers. Now, those sublayers are either inner, uh, they're not either, they are inner circular and outer long, longitudinal. So the, the smooth muscle sublayers, Fiando, an internal sublayer which is inner circular, one an outer and external sublayer which is outer longitudinal. Okay? So the connective tissue between the muscle uh, sublayers contains blood and lymph vessels as well as the myentric uh, nerve plexus or the Auerbach uh, nerve plexus of many autonomic neurons aggregated into small ganglia and interconnected by pre and post ganglionic nerve fibers. So the myentric nerve plexus, the nerve plexus is responsible for uh, motility. We're gonna discuss it now, and the enteric, enteric nervous system is made of it. It consists of. It's comprised of the submucosal plexus, which is the Meissner plexus, or um, and the myentric nerve plexus, which is the Auerbach nerve plexus. So the Auerbach nerve plexus. Um, is responsible for for motility by contractions of the muscularis. Uh, which leads to mixing and propelling of the luminal uh, contents forward, and uh, uh, they're generated and coordinated by, by the myantric plexus. So the enteric nervous system is composed of the myantric nerve plexus, which is responsible for motility, and the, um, the Meissner nerve plexus, which is responsible for control uh, of secretion from the submucosal and mucosal, mucosal glands. Finally, Anna the serosa. The serosa is a thin sheet of loose connective tissue that's rich in blood vessels, lymphatics, and adipose tissue. And the serosa is covered with a simple um, squamous, sorry, no, the, 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 thin, the thin sheet of uh, loose connective tissue is covered with a simple squamous covering epithelium, which is also known as the mesothelium. And the serosa is the outermost layer of the digestive tract located within the abdominal active, uh, cavity. The serosa of the small and large intestines is continuous with the portions of the mesentery. The mesentery is a large fold of adipose connective tissue covered on both sides by, uh, by the mesothelium that suspends the intestines and is continuous with the peritoneum. The peritoneum is a serous membrane lining the abdominal cavity. Now, the esophagus is not suspended in a cavity. It's bound directly to the adjacent structures. Yeah, I'm saying it's bound to the stomach, for example. And it therefore lacks a um, a peritoneum and a mesothelium, but because ma ma ando serosa ando adventitia, then ma fi ando mesothelium, so it has a thick adventitia, and the adventitia here is a layer of connective tissue that's continuous with that of the surrounding tissues. Okay, so hey, uh, and uh, um, the the major layers of the digestive tract, as you can see here, and the mucosa, hey, lumen, awal shi. هاي اللومن directly lining the lumen عندنا the mucosa as you can see هون عندنا the epithelium بعدين عندنا uh, lamina propria عندنا the muscularis mucosae now the muscularis mucosae consists of an inner circular and an outer longitudinal smooth muscle layer and uh, the muscularis mucosae as we said separates the mucosa from the submucosa بعدين عندنا the submucosa which has dense connective tissue the lamina propria and the mucosa has loose connective tissue Whereas the the submucosa has dense connective tissue, and as you can see, the submucosal gland, uh, and the secretion of the submucosal gland is controlled by the Meissner uh, nerve plexus, and the blood vessels and the submucosal nerve plexus, uh, which controls the secretion, and the command the muscularis layer, which has an inner circular layer, as you can see here, and an outer longitudinal layer, and command the myentric nerve plexus, which uh, controls motility, and finally, and here the serosa. So this is, um, as you can see, the major layers of the digestive tract. Okay, so the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and serosa or adventitia. Um, okay, now just a quick note. You know, the epithelium of the, of the digestive tract differs. Much نفس epithelium as we go. The oral cavity and the anus, which the start and the end of the digestive tract, uh, are stratified squam uh, squamous epithelium. And the stomach and the intestines, the large and the small intestine, are simple columnar epithelium. Okay? So, oral cavity. The oral cavity is lined with stratified squamous epithelium, which may be keratinized, partially keratinized, or non-keratinized, depending on the location. So, 
يعني ما في عندنا مثلا انه اتس اول كيراتينايز لا ات ديبندز اون ذا لوكيشن ذا اون ذا لوكيشن ان ذا اورال كافيتي سو ذا ابيثيليال ديفرنشيشن كيراتينايزيشن اند ذا انترفيس بتوين ذا ابيثيليوم اند لامنا بروبيا ار سيميلر تو ذوز فيتشرز ان ذا ابيديرمس اند ذا ديرمس ذات ار ديسكاست ان مور اكستنسيف ذات ار ديسكاست مور مور انتنسيفلي وذ سكن شرحناها قبل هيك like the keratinized uh, like the keratinized surface cells of epidermis the flattened superficial cells of the oral epithelium undergo continuous desquamation or loss at the surface unlike those of the epithelium the uh, the shed cells of the non keratinized or parakeratinized oral epithelium retain their nuclei so the nuclei تبعهم معهم whereas um, The flattened superficial cells of the oral epithelium undergo continuous desquamation. They lose their uh, nuclei. Okay, so uh, the keratinized cell layers resist damage from abrasion. Abrasion, يعني uh, rubbing against a rough surface. ف the keratinized cell layers uh, help in resisting damage from abrasion, and are best developed in the mas- uh, masticatory mucosa, on the gingiva, the gums, and hard palate. Okay, so the gingiva and the hard palate and home uh, keratinized cell layers. The lamina propria in these regions rests directly on the periosteum of underlying bone. Okay, so and the non-keratinized squamous epithelium, which predominates in the lining mucosa. So the keratinized cell layers موجودة بالmasticatory mucosa and the non-keratinized squamous epithelium موجود باللining mucosa. موجود بال soft palate cheeks the floor of the mouth and the pharynx or the throat اللي هو the posterior region of the oral cavity leading to the esophagus and uh, lying mucosa overlies a thick submucosa containing many minor salivary glands which secrete continuously to keep the mucosal surface wet and diffuse lymphoid tissue throughout the oral cavity the epithelium contains transient antigen presenting cells and rich sensory innervation okay so The well-developed core of the striated muscle in the lips or the labia uh, makes these structure high uh, makes these structures highly mobile for ingestion, speech, and other forms of communication. So, in the striated muscle, موجود مثلاً باللبس, which help in the mobility, uh, ingestion, speech, and other forms of communication. And both lips have three differently covered surfaces. So, خلينا نتكلم عن surfaces of the lips. أول شيء عندنا the internal mucous surface. which has a lining mucosa with a thick non-keratinized epithelium and many minor labial salivary glands and the second um, the second surface which is the uh, it's not a surface actually it's between the external and the internal surface and it's called the red zone or the v- uh, vermilion zone and it's covered by very thin keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and is transitional between the oral mucosa and the skin so the internal mucous surface is non-keratinized, whereas the red zone or the vermilion zone of each lip is covered by thin keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And this region ما فيها uh, salivary or sweat glands and is kept moist with saliva from the tongue. So لأنه ما فيها, uh, ما فيها salivary or sweat glands, it's very prone to, it's prone to dryness, so it, uh, يعني it can get dry really quickly. Uh, but um, يعني it's kept moist with saliva coming from the tongue. The underlying connective tissue is very rich in both sensory innervation and capillaries, which impart the pink color to this region. So uh, our lips are pink because of the capillaries that are present in the red zone or the vermilion zone. Finally, under the outer surface, and the outer surface has thin skin. It consists of epidermal and dermal layers, sweat glands, and many hair follicles with sebaceous glands. And the outer surface is covered with stratified uh, squamous epithelium that is keratinized. هون عنا, as you can see, uh, هاي ال, uh, this is uh, a section of the lips. عنا هون ال skeletal or, st- or striated muscle. في uh, different sources حكوا uh, striated و different sources حكوا skeletal. So I went with skeletal. عنا كمان uh, salivary glands هون. في ال hair follicles هاي هم, as you can see. عنا the skin here. And uh, هاي ال red zone. Okay. و هاي ال oral mucosa. Okay, which is the uh, internal uh, surface of the lips. Okay, so هلا بننتقل لل tongue. The tongue is a muscular organ and is covered by mucosa. The tongue is a mass of striated muscle covered by mucosa, 
which manipulates ingested material during mastication and swallowing. So the tongue is highly mobile. It moves a lot. Uh, it moves all the time, actually. Yani, most of the time. It, yani, it's never, uh, never still. Okay? So, and its function it's to, is to manipulate ingested material during mastication and swallowing. It moves the food around in our mouth uh, during chewing, for example, and swallowing. The muscle fibers are oriented in all directions, allowing, high, uh, allowing a high level of mobility. That's the the tongue is very mobile. Connective tissue between the small fascicles, fascicles, yani bundles of muscle, is penetrated by the lamina propria, which makes the mucous membrane strongly adherent to the muscular core. So the mucous membrane has a very powerful muscular core. Okay? So... The lower surface of the tongue is smooth with typical lining mucosa. The dorsal surface is irregular, having hundreds of small uh, produ uh, protruding papillae of various types on uh, on its anterior uh, two thirds of the tongue. Now, the anterior two thirds of the tongue is called the oral part, when the command the pharyngeal part, which is the um, the posterior third. So the tongue is divided into thirds. The anterior two thirds is uh, uh, yani the oral part. Will uh, one third the posterior one third is called the pharyngeal part. Okay, uh, the papilla, the papillary and tonsillar areas of the lingual surface are penetrate are separated by a V-shaped groove, groove. Sorry, called the sulcus terminalis. Hala, I'm going to So, I'm going to discuss this later. Okay, here. So, hi al tongue. هاي ال ال anterior two third اللي حكينا هلا عنه and this is the posterior one third now the anterior two third اسم اسمه ال oral part and this is the pharyngeal part هون عنا ال lingual tonsils بال بال one third وعنا كمان هون ال palatine tonsils هاي ال sulcus terminalis اللي حكينا عنه زي ال v shaped وفوق ال sulcus terminalis في عنا as you can see here a foramen اسمه foramen cecum okay so the lingual papillae are elevations of the mucous membrane that assume various forms and functions. We have four types. We're going to talk about them. Well, but before we talk about those four types, I just want to add one more structure to the tongue, which is the uh, frenulum. And the frenulum, frenulum, as you can see here, is like um, is a line directly under um, the center of the tongue, and it's a fold of mucous membrane. Now, Dr. Riam Haka and no, uh, sometimes يعني, infants can be born with um, the frenulum stuck to the floor of the mouth, as you can see here, and it's removed in surgery. Uzaman can all midwives use to him, and the mechanic us it rarely bleeds. So, hey, again, the frenulum, uh, the lingual frenulum, which is located directly under the center of the tongue. And it's a fold of mucous membrane. When it's mahi tala, the infants uh, uh, which are born with the uh, frenulum stuck to the uh, the floor of the mouth. Okay. So hala khayn ntkalam an al four types of uh, lingual papilla. Awal shi anna al filiform papilla, which is the most numerous. It's the most common in the tongue, uh, as you can see. Hai al filiform papilla. Ama wujuda taqriban bil middle of the tongue, as you can see here. Okay. And it's uh, um, they have an elongated conical shape, and they're heavily keratinized, which gives their surface a gray or whitish appearance. So, اليوم برضو دكتور حكى عن هذا الاجزامبل إنه زمان لما إحنا لما إحنا كنا صغار ولما نكون صايم كذا نعرف إنه مثلاً اللي قدامنا صايم نلا ورجينا لسانك وإذا لقينا عليه مثلاً a gray um, a gray or a white appearance, نعرف إنه they're they're actually fasting, and that's because the keratin on the tongue hasn't been washed away yet. So, uh, هذا موجود عنا بالفايلي فورم بابيلا, and uh, sorry, موجود عنا بال يعني بالكراتين اللي على التنغ, and the keratin on the tongue gives the surface a gray or a white appearance. مثل حكي تلا, the filiform فورم بابيلا uh, provide a rough surface that facilitates movement of food during chewing. Uh, في نوتس هون على جنب the filey form papilla ما فيهم taste buds احنا عندنا four types of uh, lingual papilla three of them have taste buds and uh, the filey form papilla they don't have taste buds the filey form papilla are the most numerous since محيط and they're distributed all over the upper surface of the tongue ما في اي filey form papilla on the under surface of the tongue and they have a mechanical role نفس ما حكيت هلا انه um, they facilitate movement of food during chewing okay the second type is the fungiform papilla, and they're much less numerous. They're lightly keratinized. Uh, the filiform papilla, hala, حكيت 
they're heavily keratinized, whereas the fungi, uh, the fungi form papilla are uh, lightly keratinized, and they are interspersed among the phyllae form papilla. يعني موجودة بين ال phyllae form papilla. They are mushroom shaped, من اسمهم, and uh, they have uh, well vascular, uh, vascularized and innervated cores of lamina propria. The taste buds اللي موجودة على ال fungi, uh, fungi form papilla are on the upper surface of the tongue. Okay, as you can see here. هاي ال fungi form papilla. تاريخ موجودة على the tip of the tongue. Okay. The third type of the lingual papilla is the foliate papilla, and uh, the foliate papilla consists of several parallel ridges on each side of the tongue. موجودة على ال lateral aspect of the tongue, uh, on the sides of the tongue. And they are anterior to the acellulus terminalis, but are rudimentary in humans. يعني they're rare to be found in humans, especially in older individuals. So لما إحنا نكون صغار بيكون عندنا more uh, foliate papilla, uh, papilla, but as we grow older, they disappear for an unknown reason. The foliate papilla are non-keratinized. So so far حكينا عن ال uh, uh, foliate form papilla which are heavily keratinized, the fungi form papilla which are lightly keratinized. The foliate papilla are non-keratinized, and the taste buds on the foliate papilla are on the lateral aspect of the tongue. So هاي ال ال foliate papilla. As you can see, we have different structures. يعني هادا it's more conical. هادا it's almost يعني more um يعني more rectangular. I want to say. So as you can see, يعني there are different structures. So it's good إنه نحفظ the structures تبعهم. Okay. And um, what was what was I saying? Okay, so the foliate papilla. نفس ما حكينا. Let's just do a quick recap. The foliate papilla, the taste buds اللي عليهم موجودة on the lateral aspect of the tongue. They're non-keratinized and they're uh, rare to be found in uh, humans, especially in older individuals. بس موجودين دائما بالانفنس. So uh, the last type of the uh, lingual papilla, اللي هو الفالت papilla or the uh, or the circumvalet papilla. And they are the largest papilla. Their diameter uh, is between one uh, to three millimeters. And we can find eight to 12 valid papilla. Dictorium haka 10 to 18. So um, so it's either eight to 12 or 10 to 18. But we can't remember the name of the doctor. And they are normally aligned just in front of the terminal sulcus. As you can see here, this is the terminal sulcus or the sulcus terminalis. This is the valid papilla. As you can see, they're aligned with them. يعني ماشي على the same uh, line of the sulcus terminalis. And as you can see here, this is what the valid papilla looks like. Okay. So, uh, ducts of several, several small serous salivary glands empty into the deep moat-like grooves surrounding each valid papilla. As you can see here, there is a groove between um, يعني بين ال ridges of the papilla. And في عنا هون saliva emptying into those uh, grooves. And في بس هون نوت كاتبتهم في عنا taste buds are on the sides of the tongue. الدكتور يوم حكى إنه في twelve to twenty taste buds on every papilla on every valid papilla. And most taste buds موجودة على ال papilla على ال valid papilla. يعني they hold more than fifty percent of the taste buds in the whole oral cavity موجودين وين بال valid papilla. Okay. So, ال the salivary glands, which empty into the deep moat-like groove, uh, valid papilla, uh, provides a continuous flow of fluid over the taste buds that are abundant on the sides of these papil uh, papillae, washing away food particles so that the taste buds can receive and process new gusta uh, gustatory stimuli. Gustatory, any tasting, so it uh, it stimulates the the gustatory cells. To uh, يعني عشان يصير في عنا uh, tasting so لازم يجي عليهم saliva نفس ما نعرف so the, uh, that helps the groove the the saliva flowing into the groove helps in um, gustation secretions from these and other minor salivary glands associated with taste buds contain a lipase so lipase can also be stimulated uh, can also be sorry secreted um, from salivary glands and um, the secretion of lipase prevents the formation of a hydrophobic film on these structures that would hinder gustation. So the hydrophobic film has a thick layer of uh, a layer, a hydrophobic layer, which comes, for example, for the taste buds, and وجود هم يعني would hinder gustation. يعني راح يخلي ال gustation راح يخلي tasting harder. So the secretion of lipase prevents that formation of the hydrophobic film, اللي بتكون موجودة على taste buds. 
okay? So, taste buds موجودين all over our uh, oral cavity طيب mostly موجودة بالفالت بابيلا نفس ما حكينا and they are ovoid structures يعني egg uh, like structures egg sh- shape هم نفس ال- their shape is like an egg and uh, their ovoid structures within the stratified epithelium on the tongue's surface so the taste buds are ovoid structures within the stratified epithelium on the tongue's surface which sample the general chemical composition of ingested material so it tastes the chemical uh, it's it samples يعني you know, it tastes the food that we ingest okay so um approximately uh, tw- 250 taste buds are present on the lateral surface of each valid papilla بس ما حكينا قبل شوي انه the valid papilla holds uh, more than 50% of the taste buds in the whole oral cavity so uh, approximately 250 taste buds are present on the lateral surface of each valid papilla with many others present on the fungi form and the foliate but not the keratinized filiform نفس ما حكينا الفايليفورم ما في عليه taste buds The taste buds are not, restric- uh, not restricted to papillae and they're also widely scattered elsewhere on the dorsal and rat- lateral surfaces of the tongue where, where they are also continuously flushed by numerous minor salivary glands. A taste bud has 50 to 100 cells, about, about uh, half of which are elongated gustatory taste cells. نفس محكينا gustation يعني tasting, so gustatory cells are the tasting cells which turn over with a 7 uh, to 10 day lifespan. So the gustatory cells عندهم a 7 to 10 day lifespan and uh, most of them are uh, elongated um, gustatory cells. Other cells present are slender supportive cells, immature cells and slowly dividing basal stem cells that give rise to the other cell types. So the taste buds are made of more than one type of cell and them some gustatory cells, supportive cells, immature cells and slowly dividing basal stem cells. And the base of each bud rests on a basal lamina. So each taste bud rests on a basal lamina and is entered by an afferent sensory axon that forms synapses with the gust- uh, gustatory cells. At the apical ends of the gustatory cells, micro, uh, microvilli project toward a 2 micrometer wide, open, a wide opening in the structure called a taste pore. So a taste pore is a, an opening in the, in the structure uh, that's about 2 micrometers wide and um, the molecules, the taste tents, Uh, dissolved in saliva contact the microvilli through the pore and interact with the cell surface taste receptors. So to taste something, to taste a molecule, what happens is that the uh, molecules, once they're dissolved in the saliva, uh, it contacts the microvilli through the taste pore عشان uh, the receptors uh, come to that site عشان we taste. لأنه في عنا different receptors for different tastes. So for example, عنا ال The taste buds home is let's just let's just read this. Taste buds detect at least five broad categories of taste tints. اللي هم ال salty and uh, the salty taste, the sour taste, the sweet taste, uh, the bitter taste, and uh, the umami, which is also known as the savory taste. Now savory, يعني ما في ما في طعم نحكي إنه إنه هذا طعم savory. Savory is like a mix of uh, uh, a mix of flavors. It's like a very flavorful taste. So. The salty, uh, saltiness is detected by sodium ions. Uh, sourness is detected by hydrogen ions from acids. Um, sweetness is detected by sugars and related compounds. And the command bitterness, which is detected by alkaloids and certain toxins. And finally, the umami taste or the savory taste, which is detected by amino acids such as glut- uh, glutamate and aspartate. So, as we said the salt and sour tastes are... Uh, Detected by ions and sodium ions and hydrogen ions, so they are produced by ion channels. So the t- to taste them, t- to taste them, sorry, via ion channels, and these ion channels help in tasting them. And the other categories we talked about, which are the sweet, the bitter, and the savory, are mediated by G protein coupled receptors. So there are receptors for those um, for those tastes, which are sweet, bitter, and savory, and then there uh, and then channels, ion channels for the saltiness and the, the sourness. اللي هم السوديوم for salty and hydrogen for sour. Okay? So, receptor binding produces depolarization of the gustatory cells, stimulating the sensory nerve fibers that transmit information to the brain for processing. So, uh, once the receptor, uh, once the receptor binds to the to the to the taste, يعني to the مثلاً alkaloid, for example, uh, بصير في عنا depolarization of the gustatory cells, which stimulates the sensory nerve fibers. 
to transmit information to the brain for processing. That's how we taste. That's how um, يعني, that's how نعرف, you know, we're tasting something sweet, for example. A conscious perception of tastes in food requires olfactory and other sensations in addition to taste bud activity. So uh, 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 tasting isn't only dependent on, ta- on taste buds. We have the olfactory and other sensations in addition to the taste bud activity. Okay. So hi here, محاضرت ال اليوم اللي الدكتور حكى عنها حكى كمان عطى introduction عن الاسافجس بس uh, I'm gonna leave it to the next part عشان ما يصير في confusion إن شاء الله المرة الجاية رح نتكلم عن الاسافجس and uh, thank you for watching I hope you guys benefit from this video for any questions feel free to contact me on Messenger.